This video discusses sensitivity of bonds to shift in the yield curve. So similarly to how we have beta, uh, which measures the sensitivity of equity securities to changes in an index. For example, if we're comparing, if we're seeing the beta relative to the market index is 1.5, then when uh, the market, when the when the market changes by one percent, the beta will change by one point. Uh, the stock price will change by one point five percent, and that's how we associate beta as a sensitivity to an equity index. Uh, similarly, duration measures the sensitivity of bond prices to changes in interest rates. So, how does this bond price change relative to how the interest rate changes, which is what we do when a yield, which is what happens when a yield curve shifts, right? Interest rates change. So duration is our measure of the sensitivity of bond prices to changes in the interest rate. Uh, this formula guides uh, how we can uh, find out the unexpected return due to the changes in interest rate. So our U which is our unanticipated return due to changes in the interest rate is equal to the negative duration times this delta i. Again, this delta i, so if i is the interest rate, this delta i is the proportional change in 1 plus i, okay, the proportional change in this, in this value, 1 plus i. So once again, we assume a single rate for all maturities, which is the same thing as saying uh, uh, that the, the, the yield curve is flat. Okay. If we have a, a pure discount bond maturing in T years, we've already done this, the price uh, at the zeroth time would be just discounting that price back T times. And so it'll be 1000 divided by one plus I to the power of T. So there's a whole derivation given in the book for how to determine uh, the duration of a particular bond. But I don't wanna go into that much detail. I just want you to get the grasp of the main components of what is duration uh, and how it's used. Okay, this is a key factor. For a pure discount bond, the duration is equal to its maturity. Okay, so uh, if we have a bond that's not paying any coupons, uh, it should be an easy shortcut to find the duration of that bond. The duration of uh, that bond will be its maturity. So given a flat yield curve, which means again, once again, all the interest rates are the same across maturities, the sensitivity of a pure discount bond so a change in the yield should be directly proportional to its maturity because the duration is equal to its maturity. So that's basically uh, we can find whatever whatever uh, change in the yield curve happens uh, that uh, the, the sensitivity of the price of the bond should be directly proportional to its maturity. So uh, let's take a look at uh, some numbers. Assume the change in interest rate uh, divided by one plus I is one percent. Okay, assume that that change is 1%. And then based on that, we're going to see what should the sensitivity of the bond price be uh, re by relating this relationship right here. So we know that the duration is equal to its maturity. And we're saying that uh, the sensitivity should be directly proportional to its maturity. So let's look at a bond, a discount bond, with a maturity of one year. Now, if that change in interest rate is 1%, then the, if you're saying it's directly proportional to its maturity and the maturity is one year, then we're saying the change in price of that pure discount bond then is 1%. Similarly, if the interest rate changes by 1% and our duration is equal to our maturity, this bond has a maturity of five years. So the, the duration of this bond is also five. Uh, is five. Uh, then the change in the price for that discount bond with the maturity of five years would be 5%. Okay, so 1% change in the interest rate for a pure discount bond leads to a 1% change in price for a one-year maturity bond and a 5% uh, price change uh, for a discount bond with maturity of five years. Let's take a look at some numbers as well to sort of explain uh, this better. So pure discount bonds uh, returning $1,000 at the horizon. We're going to be talking about this table soon. Okay, and uh, we'll start out by explaining some of the characteristics of it. Okay, so we have pure discount bonds that return a thousand at the horizon. We have five different maturities, so each of these would return a thousand dollars at each of these time frames. So if it was a one one year maturity bond, it would return a thousand dollars in one year. If it's a five year maturity bond, it would return uh one thousand dollars in five years, and so on. 
Okay, we have two interest rates, 10% and 10.11%, and that would describe these two columns here, the 10%, 10.11%. We calculate the prices at those times. Okay, what is the change in interest rate then? The change in interest rate is just the subtraction of these two, which is 10.11, which is 0.1011, minus 10%, which is 0.1, and that's 0 0.0011. So if we're trying to find the percentage change, remember, we need if we want to find a return, we take new minus old over old, and then we can write that in percent. Okay, so what's new minus old? We have 10.11 minus 0.1, which is 0 0.0011. That's our numerator divided by uh, 1 plus. So we're finding the percentage change in 1 plus i. So we're going to write divided by 1 plus 0.1. Okay, and so we'll have 0 0.0011 uh, divided by 1 plus 0.1, which is 1.10, and that turns out to be 0.1%. Okay, so we're then concluding that the percentage change in price should be minus duration times 0.1. Okay, we have this formula here, which is minus duration uh, times uh, that change, okay, which is point, we just calculated to be 0.1%. So let's look if that actually holds or not. Remember, once again, the duration for a pure discount bond is its maturity. Okay, so the duration of this, this bond would be one. The duration of this bond would be five and so on. Okay. So we're expecting that uh, the percentage change in price should be minus 0.1% times the duration. Okay. Minus 0.1 times the duration. The duration of this bond is five. So we'd have, uh, we should have minus uh, five times 0.1, which is minus 0.5. For this one, the duration is two. So we should have minus point, uh, minus 0.1 times 2, which is minus 0.2, and so on. Okay, and I plotted all these numbers. You can take, you can try to do these uh, prices. Just make sure you're able to find a bond price uh, using the formulas we've done in the previous video. So let's say it's a two-year bond, a two-year maturity. We're trying to find the price at 10%, at 10.11%. We'll do the same calculations, uh, and we'll get 826.45, 824.80. So remember one more relationship, as the interest rate rises, bond prices drop, okay? You'll see that continuously. It goes from 909 to 908, 826 to 824, 751 to 749. So that's an inverse relationship. Interest rates go up, bond prices go down. That's another important relationship to remember. Uh, so anyway, uh, we have these percentage changes in price that we expected using theory, and we'll also show that it works uh, when you just calculate them out. Let's say we're using this three-year uh, row as our example. Okay, what's the percentage change in price that we just calculated? Okay, it's 749.07. Uh, okay, minus 751.31 divided by the original price, which is 751.31. That turns out to be minus 2.24 uh, divided by 751.31, which comes out to this number, minus 0.00298. Okay, minus 0 0.00298 is minus 0.3%. Okay, minus 0.3%. And so uh, we're seeing that whether we use direct prices or we use a theoretical relationship, the two, the two things hold where we see that uh, the unanticipated change in the price is, uh, is negative the duration times the change in the interest rate, times that proportional change in the interest rate.